Our next speaker is Julian Guillon. He's a senior quantitative analyst in the quantitative research group at Bloomberg in New York and an adjunct professor in the Department of Mathematics at Columbia University and at the current Institute of NYU. Julian has authored or co-authored articles and books on mathematics, probability, and quantitative finance, including the recent book, Nonlinear Option Pricing, which was published by Chapman and Hall. His work on the FIFA World Cup, FIFA rankings, and the UEFA Champions League has been published in the New York Times, Le Monde, and El Pais. So, uh, Julian? Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, hi everyone, so um, as you mentioned, so uh, my background is more uh, math finance and my job is math, math finance. Um, but uh, I have recently um, used uh, a bit of my spare time to uh, do some quant analysis on soccer. And um, so as you mentioned, uh, this uh, happened with some success because I had some uh, papers uh, published in, in, in top tier uh, newspapers and I was also uh, invited by uh, UEFA, which is the uh, European equivalent of FIFA, uh, to present and discuss my, my research at their headquarters. Um, and, um, and indeed, so uh, the first uh, work that I did on that subject is about the uh, uh, the final draw of uh, the FIFA World Cup. And uh, it actually all uh, started in December uh, uh, 2013 when uh, FIFA, uh, the, so the, the final draw of the FIFA World Cup was held in uh, Costa do Sahuipe in Brazil. Uh, and I was in Brazil, by the way, at the time. And, and, and clearly FIFA was doing it wrong. And clearly I, I, I could do better. So that's the story that I, I want to show you now. So what are we talking about? So we're talking about uh, the, the Soccer World Cup, which is the most popular sporting event in the world. It's even more widely viewed and uh, uh, followed than the uh, Olympics. And it's organized every uh, four years by FIFA, uh, which is the world uh, governing body of that sport. And uh, the 20th edition was held in Brazil in, July, in June and July uh, 2014, so last year. And since uh, 1998, uh, 32 senior men's national soccer teams are allowed to participate in the final tournament. And in uh, 2014, so last year, five continents were represented. So actually, Australia was there, but Australia is affiliated to uh, the Asian uh, Soccer Federation. Uh, so uh, 13 teams from uh, Europe, uh, six teams from uh, South America, including Brazil, the, the host country, five teams from Africa, five from North and Central America and the Caribbean, and, and uh, sorry, four, and four from uh, Asia. And so the, uh, uh, the final uh, tournament consists of first a group stage, okay, where the 32 finalists uh, uh, are divided into eight groups of four, uh, labeled A through H, and each group uh, plays a round robin tournament, okay, and the winner and the runner up so the first two, they advance to the knockout stage whose bracket is given here, so that's the uh, usual bracket, so with round of 16, quarterfinals, uh, semifinals, and final. And uh, so this talk is actually about how the eight uh, groups of the first stage are built and how we believe uh, they should be built. Okay, so uh, the current building procedure, so how, you, how, how the, the, the eight groups of four are built for the first phase of the final tournament, indicates that FIFA is guided by four legitimate principles, which are the following. So randomness, tractability, balance, and geographic separation. So first one, randomness means that the teams are placed into groups uh, randomly. Okay. Uh, tractability means that this has to be done using a small number of balls and balls, and it has to lend itself to a nice TV show of about one hour. Okay. So it cannot be too long, and it must be made by humans somehow. Uh, balance is important, obviously. So uh, balance means that the procedure should produce eight balanced groups. So you don't want a group made of, say, uh, yeah, the big soccer powerhouses like Brazil, Argentina, 
Germany and Spain, for instance, okay? And then another group with like uh, weaker teams, only weaker teams. So uh, balance is obviously very important and they try to achieve that. And uh, the last criterion, which is uh, legitimate, is geographic separation. So teams from the same continent cannot be drawn into the same group, okay? So you cannot have two teams from Africa in the same group, or you cannot have two teams from Asia in the same group. Okay, and this is done, yeah, okay, to make sure that this is a very unique event where you have uh, games that you cannot see otherwise. Okay, there is just one exception, which is for Europe, uh, because you have 13 European teams uh, that qualify, remember those numbers here, and of course you have only eight groups, so you have to allow two European teams per group, okay, but no more, okay, so you have a maximum of two European teams uh, per group. So this geographic separation uh, criterion is very important. Uh, so how does FIFA handle this? So they build four pots, okay? Pot number one, two, three, and four, okay? And each group is made of one team randomly drawn from each pot. So each group will have one team from pot one, one from pot two, one from pot three, and one from pot four. Okay. So pot one is the pot of, uh, pot of seeded teams. So these are the, the best teams, okay, in soccer plus the host country. So the host country is Brazil, which is also a soccer powerhouse. And uh, following like uh, FIFA rankings of October 2013, uh, the other teams of pot one are uh, Spain, Germany, Argentina, Colombia, Belgium, Uruguay, and Switzerland. Okay, best teams. And then pots two, three, and four are built using purely geographic criteria. Okay, so pot number two is the pot of African teams plus the two uh, unseeded uh, South American teams, uh, Chile and uh, Ecuador. Okay. Pot number three is the pot of Asian teams and North American teams. And pot number four is the pot of the unseeded European teams. Okay. Uh, so why uh, does FIFA do it this way? Because then, okay, so the fact that pot number one has uh, the, the eighth best team in the world, if you want, means that, of course, those teams, they cannot play against each other in, in, in the first stage, okay? So that guarantees a minimum of balance. Okay? Then, uh, the fact that pots two, three, and four are built using geographic criteria means that it's actually easy, okay, to make sure that the geographic criterion is satisfied, okay? It's not, not so uh, clear because, for instance, here you have Chile and Ecuador, and you have to make sure that they won't play against Brazil or Argentina, Colombia or Uruguay because they are all South American teams and you cannot have two South American teams, but okay, it's quite easy to do so. You can somehow skip groups. Okay, so that's, that's what they do. Uh, just a, a small remark here, you see that you have only, because here you have nine unseeded European teams, okay? Uh, and of course, pots must only contain eight teams. So one of those teams was actually randomly drawn and put in pot number two. Okay. So this, again, you have to make sure that you, you do not have this European team with a European team here, because then it would be three European teams in the same group. But anyway, it's quite easy to do so. Uh, but the problem <coughs> is that, uh, okay, you, you have introduced a minimum level of balance here by uh, introducing pot number one uh, with all the good teams. Uh, but uh, you actually observed a, a, a quite important lack of balance in the uh, actual result of the draw that happened in December 2013. So this is, the, this is the result of the draw on that day, so the eight groups of the first stage of the World Cup uh, in Brazil last year. And, uh, okay, so for those who know uh, soccer well, uh, you could easily see that groups uh, B, okay, Spain, Chile, Netherlands, for instance, and group D, Uruguay, Italy, England, and also uh, Group G with Germany, uh, Ghana, the US, and Portugal were very strong groups, while uh, Groups A, E, F, and H okay, were uh, weak or very weak. Okay. And of course, you can uh, put some numbers on uh, those uh, uh, assertions. And for instance, you can measure <coughs> the strength of a group by either measuring, me measuring the sum of uh, relative ranks from one to 32, so okay, so the best team according to FIFA rankings, for instance, at the time. So best team uh, has uh, rank number one and the uh, lowest FIFA ranked team, which was uh, uh, 
Cameroon at the time uh, gets number 32, and then you just sum the relative ranks from 1 to 32 of the four teams in each group, and you get a number. And uh, of course, the smaller the number, the, the stronger the group, because you're adding ranks. Okay? So the perfect balance would mean that each group has a, s a sum of relative ranks of, s of 66. Okay? So that would be the perfect balance. Uh, so the, the ideal goal. Actually, you see that precisely those strong, group, strong groups that I mentioned, B, D, and G, they have uh, numbers well below 66, like 52, 49, and uh, 51, compared to the scores of 84, uh, 75, 74, 79 of groups A, uh, 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 E, F, and H. Okay, so you have a range which is just maximum value minus minimum value of 35 in those numbers and the standard deviation of 13, which is actually uh, very large. Okay. And this is not so surprising because, of course, when you uh, go back just one slide, you see that you actually have teams here in pots two and three, for instance, Chile and the US, that have very good rankings, okay? uh, but they are placed together in pots with other teams that have like, very low rankings, like Cameroon, Australia, sorry, uh, Korea, Iran, for instance. So that means that, for instance, for Chile, they are guaranteed to play first again a European CD team. Has to be European because you cannot have two uh, South American teams in the same group. Okay, so it's uh, going to be a strong team, and also they are guaranteed to play against one of those unseeded European teams, which are also good. Okay, but Chile is good as well. Okay, so it's going to be quite clear that you will have. Uh, strong groups, so the group of Chile is going to be strong, and the same for the US. Okay, so this will introduce uh, uh, imbalance, and that's what we observed. And what I mentioned is uh, does also mean that you observe lack of fairness. Precisely, what I just said for Chile and the US means that Chile and the US have uh, a greater chance of ending up in a tough group than they should. Okay. Again, Chile is guaranteed to play against a very strong team here and a strong team here, but they're also strong themselves. So it's, it's already three strong teams in the group. But that's because Chile is very strong, but is not somehow protected because it's put in the same group, in the same pot, sorry, as uh, weak teams. And the same for the US. Okay? The US is guaranteed to play against a strong team, very strong team here and a strong team here because those teams are strong in, in, in soccer, those unseeded European teams. Okay. So that means that uh, some teams are actually aggrieved by the current procedure, uh, and in particular, uh, Chile and the, the US uh, last year. And uh, finally, a last flow of the current draw system is the uneven distribution. So that means that actually all possible outcomes of the draw are not equally likely. Okay? So you have, you have events that, are, uh, that have probability zero. So for instance, the fact that two teams play against each other, two teams of pot one play against each other, that's totally forbidden by the procedure or the fact that Chile would play against Colombia, that's also forbidden by the geographic criterion. But then you, you list all the, the admissible outcomes, and you actually expect that all those admissible outcome, outcomes, they have the same probability. And it's not the case. Okay. It's not, it's, so it's actually much better than in the previous editions. For instance, uh, you have a paper by Jones and another by Ratgeber and Ratgeber. So f uh, with respect to the FIFA World Cup of 1990 in Italy and the one in, 19, uh, sorry, in 2006 uh, in uh, Germany, so here, the, the, uneven, the distribution was really, really uneven. Uh, this is much better now, but it's uh, okay, still not good enough. Okay, so what, what is uh, the procedure that I suggest? Okay. You want to get rid uh, of imbalance. Okay. So the very natural assumption is that you will actually build pots by level and not according to geographic criteria. Okay. So that means that here, in my suggestion, this first column has the host country, okay, so I do not question the protection of the host country. The host country and the best seven teams uh, in the world according to some rankings. So here I use the FIFA rankings, but you can use LO rankings or whatever ranking you, you want. It's just an orthogonal problem. Okay, so that's the best eight teams, if you want. And then put the second column as the, the following best eight, okay, and then the following eight here in the third column. Uh, but you see that the way I order them is uh, here uh, uh, top to bottom and here bottom to top because I'm introducing like an S-curve type constraint or here it's more like a W uh, type constraint like this way. Okay, so you start from here, you go down, 
and then here you go up and then down and then up. Okay, so what does it mean? Okay, it means that, for instance, okay, if you consider just the lines okay, of uh, this table, then, we, then you would get, uh, if you consider ranks from uh, 1 to 32, like giving a, a rank 1 to Brazil, for instance, that the, the, the sum 1 plus 16 plus 17 plus 32 is precisely equal to this perfect 66 that you wanted for perfect balance. And the same, because of course, 2 plus 15 plus 18 plus 31 makes uh, 66. Okay. So you would get like perfect balance if you consider this deterministic uh, uh, building of groups. But of course, you see the problem is that here, for instance, first line, you have Côte d'Ivoire, which is Ivory Coast, and uh, Cameroon, so two African teams. So, okay, so it does not satisfy the geographic criterion, so you cannot accept such a solution. And then the second line has Spain, Greece, and Croatia, which are three European teams. That's not admissible. Germany, Portugal, and Russia are also three European teams, not admissible. Okay. So you have to allow some randomness uh, around this uh, deterministic perfect balance because you want to, uh, to uh, enforce uh, the, the geographic separation. Uh, and the way I do it is I just so cut this table into two pieces, the upper part and the lower part. And uh, so I decide that teams from pot one, so pot one is now uh, made of four teams, so it's the upper part of the first column. Pot one will play against team of pot four, five, and eight. Okay, and then teams of pot two will play against teams of, uh, of pot three, six, and seven. So the best part of first column will play against the worst part of second column, best part of uh, third column, and worst part of eighth column. Okay, so that's this, uh, this S curve uh, constraint. So that guarantees like very good balance. Uh, and the fact that I allow randomness means that I, okay, I, w I, I, w I want to find a way uh, to make sure that the geographic criterion is satisfied. So I can navigate a bit uh, here, uh, so in, in the upper part, uh, for draw number one and in the lower part for no, draw uh, number two. But you see the problem, as I mentioned, is that now that pots are built by level, uh, you have teams from different continents that are spread across uh, the, uh, all the pots. Okay? So it's not easy to design a draw procedure that would guarantee, for instance, that Cameroon will not play against uh, Ivory Coast or that you will not have uh, three European teams in the same group. Okay, so that's the main question that we have to address here. How can we ensure that the geographic constraint is satisfied in a tractable, evenly distributed way? Uh, okay, of course, tractable is super important because you have uh, obvious evenly distributed rules that are, for instance, okay, you just list all uh, the possible results of the draw that satisfy the geographic constraint and you just pick one, okay? But you have too many of them, okay? So it's not tractable. Or you could just uh, make a, just a random draw, ignoring the geographic constraint, and you just reject the results uh, if the geographic constraint is not satisfied. Okay, so that's also fine, but you also have you only have 1.2 percent of the results here that satisfy the geographic constraint. So that means that you will have to re uh, repeat in average 85 times the draw before you get a result. Okay, so that's that's not doable for TV that needs to have a one-hour show. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's a very important constraint. Okay, so the tractability. Uh, actually, UEFA it, uh, faces exactly the same issue when they draw the, the groups of their uh, uh, um, flagship uh, 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 club competition, which is the Champions League. But, and, and they do it in a tractable way. Okay, so that's interesting. But the thing is that their procedure is actually unevenly distributed. Okay, so I... Uh, uh, there is this paper by Klusner and Baker, and I also explain uh, this in, 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 in the paper about the World Cup, about the, the uneven distribution. So we want both tractability and uneven distribution, and that's, uh, how what I, that's what I suggest to do. Okay, so let me introduce just what it is to be an admissible continental distribution. So remember uh, this uh, table here. Uh, for instance, here you see that in uh, this Pot number four, you have Bosnia, Greece, Portugal, and the US, so three European teams and one North American team. Okay, here, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Croatia, Russia, France, so one African team and three European teams. Okay. So here, same. So here you, you find again the three European team 
and the one North American team, which we know is, are, are the US. And here in pot number five, the three European team and one African team. Okay. So what do I call an admissible continental distribution is, okay, first I fix uh, the identities of the, the CD teams here in pot, uh, for instance, in pot one, let, let's just look at the upper half of this table. Okay, Brazil, Spain, Germany, Argentina. And an admissible distribution, <coughs> continental distribution, is just a, con uh, a distribution of the continents of teams from pot four, five, and eight that satisfies the, the continental uh, 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 compositions of those pots, as we just mentioned, and also satisfies the geographic constraints. So that means that on one line, I, ca I, I cannot have uh, two times the same continent. So this would be, so here, of course, you replace Brazil with South America, you replace Spain uh, with Europe. So I cannot have two times the same continent, except Europe, where that can be here twice, okay, but no more. So here, for instance, you have South America, Europe, Europe, Asia. That's okay, so that's admissible. Here you have Europe, Europe, Africa, Asia, and that's okay. But for instance, you could not have Spain, Europe, and Europe, okay? That, that would be an admissible. Okay. So you just count the number of admissible conti uh, continental distribution, both for draw one and for draw two. And because you, here we are just dealing at the level of continents and not at the level of teams, you actually just have a very small or very small or small number, number of those uh, admissible continental distributions. So last year, for instance, you only had six admissible continental distribution for draw one and 24 uh, for draw two. Okay, so that's very easy to just randomly pick one of those. And I guess that and that now you guess how the procedure would work. So you would f before the draw. Uh, uh, um, publish the exhaustive list of admissible continental distribution uh, for draw one and for draw two, and you would give numbers from zero to, uh, okay, for instance, uh, okay, anyway, should you, here you just have six for the upper part and 24 for the lower part, and on the day of the draw, you would uh, randomly uh, pick uh, two uh, admissible distribution, continental distribution, one for the upper part and one for the lower part. For, for instance, last year, you, you could have just uh, rolled two dice, okay, one with six faces and one with 24 faces, and that would have given you the continental distribution for the upper part and the lower part. And then once you have the continental distribution, what you do is super easy. So remember, for instance, okay, you could start from pot eight, for instance, usually you start from the weaker teams and then you go to the strong teams. Uh, so you have pot eight here, okay, with three uh, Asian teams. I recall that Australia is Asian in soccer, it's weird. And, uh, and uh, Cameroon uh, from Africa. So if, for instance, uh, so now you pick really the teams, okay, you have a pot with four balls and each ball has uh, the name of one team, okay, in pot eight. So if you first pick Cameroon, then uh, it goes directly uh, to uh, the first position available for its continent and its pot, which is pot eight. So uh, Cameroon would go directly here with Germany, okay? And then if you pick, uh, I don't know, Iran, then Iran would go, sorry, here, in the first position available for its continent and its pot. So here it would be here, first position available is this one, so it would go with Brazil, okay? And then you repeat exactly the same procedure for pots seven, six, five, four, three, okay? And eventually, uh, in order to determine the matches for the knockout stage, uh, the host country is allocated to group A, so that's a tradition so that I would not question, and the seven remaining CD teams are allocated randomly to groups B and H, B to H, sorry, in a way uh, that is consistent with the S-curve, so you want the knockout stage to be balanced the same way as you balance the, uh, the group stage. So let me go quickly because I want to show you the Monte Carlo simulation. This is just, uh, okay. Uh, an illustration of what I said, those are the teams, so each color is a continent, so that's Europe and uh, North America and South America, etc. So this is the S-curve, okay, now that you have the S-curve, so, for instance, so you, you cut into two pieces, so for instance you, you look at the left part, here you forget, so you just keep, sorry, you, you, you keep the names of the, the, the seeded teams here, and then you forget about the uh, the names of the, the teams in, in pot four, five, and eight, but you just look at their color, which are their continent, and you see that there are six admissible uh, uh, um, distributions of uh, colors or continents that satisfy the geographic constraint. You just pick one randomly, okay, with your, with your dice, and then you pick the teams. Okay. And as far as, 
I know this is the first time that a random procedure is suggested for the final draw of the fair walker that is tractable. Okay, so it's random, it's tractable, it produces balanced groups by construction because you have this uh, pot built by level and the S-curve constraint and it satisfies the geographic constraint as well. And I will show you in the last uh, three or four minutes that it's balanced and that it's fair to all teams, so including the US and Chile. Uh, so this is, yeah, this is precisely the a nice graph uh, for the US. Uh, so I just wanted the, okay, so on the x-axis, it would be uh, the strength of the group, okay? So you repeat many times uh, uh, draw simulations and you measure the strength of the group of the US, okay, in that simulation. And just, so okay, if you sum ranks, so uh, the smaller the number, the stronger the group, so I wanted to reverse it. So I take 66, which is the ideal value, minus the sum of the ranks, okay? And so that's what on the x-axis. So harder groups are on the right and easier groups on the left. And this is just the, uh, okay, the histogram, so the probability distribution under the FIFA procedure and under the procedure that I suggest. So you see that under the, so the perfect uh, value would be zero now because, okay, I have recentered everything. Uh, so you see that the FIFA uh, dis distribution is really uh, biased to the right, okay, uh, towards strong groups, okay? And the, the, the vertical line here is the actual result, okay? So you see that actually, uh, so, so FIFA, sorry, so the US they ended, up, ended up in a strong group, okay, with Germany and Portugal and Ghana, for instance, but it, it was not due to bad luck, okay? Because actually this, this, this uh, vertical line, it's somehow right in the middle of the distribution, okay? So it's just because the distribution was biased, okay? Uh, so the new uh, distribution that I, the new rule that I suggest, they produce a distribution which is first unbiased, okay? So it's recentered towards zero and has much less variance, okay? Sorry. Same thing for Chile, okay? It's actually the same uh, story as for the US. You also had uh, the case of Cameroon, so opposite case where uh, Cameroon benefited from the FIFA rules because you see that the distribution is pushed to the left, so to easy groups, and they indeed got some easy group, but mostly not, not because they were so much lucky, but because of the bias of the, the distribution. And actually, so the procedure that I suggest is recentering everything and uh, has uh, less variance, okay. And you can actually do it for the 32 teams, and these are the results, so you cannot, we cannot go through them now, but these are all the results. You see that all the time, less variance and uh, recentered. You may wonder why I have like this uh, kind of bimodal uh, distribution here. It's actually only because of the host protection, because if you go back here, or here even, you see that actually Brazil is treated as if it were the best team in the world, like number one, but it's, it, it was actually number 11 in the FIFA ranking at the time. And when I built my histogram, I, I used the rank 11th and not one. So some teams, they may play depending on, on the draw. They, they are allowed to play against Brazil and the draw, uh, uh, the draw's result is that they play or not against Brazil and that explains the, the, the buy modality. Uh, and uh, so, for instance, if you uh, remove the host protection, this bimodality disappears uh, completely. And uh, so this is the, the distribution of the range and the standard deviation of the eight sums of, relate, of um, uh, relative groups. So remember the, this first table that I showed you here. So these are th those numbers, okay, the range and standard deviation <laughs> of uh, the sum of relate, relative ranks of the eight uh, groups. And you see that so the numbers were 35 and 13 for the actual draw. Uh, so you see that the distribution, yeah, it's actually uh, centered around 30 and here around 10. So those big numbers, it was not because they were, FIFA was unlucky during the draw, but it, it was just uh, because of uh, the, the draw procedures themselves. So if you now use the, the procedure that I suggest, you see that uh, those, those distributions are pushed to the left clearly. And actually a lot of this range and standard deviation, they uh, are the result of the host protection. So if you remove the host protection, those uh, blue distributions are even more uh, pushed to the left. So a way to do that, for instance, is to use ELO ratings as of June 
2014 because in those ratings, uh, Brazil was actually number one. So there, I mean, it, it boils down to uh, removing uh, host protection. Let me skip this and just end uh, by telling you that you can actually, using our analysis, um, rank uh, the teams according to whether they were lucky or unlucky during the draw. So remember those, uh, here, those uh, vertical lines, okay? So of course, if the vertical line was here, that would mean that Cameroon would have been very, very lucky. And if it had been here, that it would have been very, very, uh, uh, sorry, here lucky and here, yeah, unlucky during the draw. So you can just uh, compute the p-value, okay, for each of those distribution and just rank the teams. And uh, that, uh, okay, so that, for instance, proved that uh, the luckiest team was Mexico and the unluckiest team, sorry again, was Australia, who indeed had to play against uh, the best team of pot one, the best team of pot uh, uh, two, and the best team of pot four. So that, that, was, uh, that was really hard. Uh, there is a nice paper by uh, those guys at the, the New York Times here. And uh, yeah, let me skip this. And I think that just for the last 30 seconds, if you allow me, I will just show you uh, a live demo, but it's going to be like really very quick. Um, I should have done this better. Uh, sorry, so if you just type anyway in my name. Because those guys at the New York Times, who are great people, by the way, they have, you know, those, uh, uh, where is it, sorry. Uh, I should do it here. Oh, okay. Just to show you that you can play with the draw simulator. Uh, yeah, okay, sorry. I should have prepared this, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so these are the guys that, uh, at the New York Times and, and they built this uh, very nice uh, page where uh, you can simulate the draw according to the, the current FIFA rules on the left and uh, the rule that I suggest on the right. And when you have like a uh, red group, it means that they are very uh, strong. And when you have uh, uh, green groups, that means that they are very weak according to the FIFA rankings. And you can actually just, where is it? Yeah. Uh, simulate the draw, so you just click here many times, and you see that uh, it's much more gray on the right, which means that the groups are balanced, so that's just uh, a way to play with the, uh, the two uh, random uh, procedures. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thanks, Julian. Uh, just a quick question. Sure. Uh, with your method, though, isn't it possible that there are no so the number of possible column Ab distributions is zero? Absolutely. So I let me just show you one table. Uh, that's something that I skipped in the end. Uh, there is a clear uh, situation where there is just no admissible continental distribution. Uh, it's... If Russia was hosting. Yeah, sorry? If Russia was hosting instead of Brazil. Uh, yeah, okay let's, let's, okay, let's see that. Uh, no, because they are on the same side of Actually, the upper. If, you, if yeah. USA was replaced by the uh, Yeah, team, okay, example. so clearly, if, if on the upper ha half of uh, this table you have, for instance, nine European teams, okay, how, how, you have four groups, you are not allowed to have more than two European teams per group, okay, so that's not. So in that case, I just devised like a very simple rebalancing algorithm that does minimal distortion to this S curve to guarantee that they will, okay. And uh, that actually just to show you that actually occurred in 2000 and in 1998 and in 2002 uh, that you see here. For instance, in 1998, you actually had 10 uh, European teams uh, on the on the lower part. So you see that actually. So the so look at the last column. Just by changing Aust Austria and Croatia, so put them on the upper part and putting back Paraguay and South Africa on the lower part, just solved the problem. That's an excellent Thanks. remark. Uh, from you. Thank you so much. Thanks.